Hey, welcome to the video version of working with image overlays in Google Earth. Uh, it's a uh, nice uh, early morning here, so I thought I'd shoot this video to kind of go along with the write-up that I did about this. And uh, what this is all about is that uh, we're taking imagery from Google Earth. We're going to export it out. We're going to import it into Echo, Echo House Site Survey Pro. Uh, we're going to do a predictive model on it, and then we're going to export it out of Pro and then bring it back over here into Google Earth, and then we're going to overlay it, hopefully. Uh, what I'm going to do in the video here that I didn't do in the write-up is that I'm just going to show you a couple other uh, tips and tricks that I like to use to help speed things up and to help uh, kind of coordinate the, the image overlay portion of it. All right, so if you read the uh, write-up or if you haven't, um, the video here is the exact same thing. Um, and really the intent and purpose of all this is to kind of help spruce up some of your um, maybe pre-sales engagements around you know, wireless coverage in, in outdoor spaces. Um, to help customers understand the process, the procedures involved, and then really just kind of give the, the customer uh, a better sense of, you know, knowing what you're doing, how you're going to approach, you know, your methodologies and everything around it. And then, you know, the, the obvious wow factor of, you know, using 3D buildings and, and overlaying your predictive model into that. So with that said, let's just jump right into it. Um, I've picked on uh, Deep Ellum here. This is a portion of Dallas, Texas. Uh, an area that I've worked in before, and so this kind of gives us a, a good idea of what um, uh, what we can do with sort of some outdoor coverage uh, for modeling purposes. So what first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a polygon around the coverage area so that we can identify it uh, when we do our extraction and our overlay. So we got a polygon shape. If you notice, I've clicked up here. There's a nice little polygon button. Uh, we're going to name it um, our coverage area. And if you're like me, um, you like to go a little bit outside um, of the coverage area so that you can show uh, your customers where the signal is going to go once it leaves that you know immediate area. It's always a good idea to do that. Um, it kind of helps you know in explaining things to the customers. Um, they appreciate that. So if we uh, if we call this inner portion here our coverage area, kind of here in the center of the screen. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take the, the polygon and we're going to go outside in no particular place or position. Although I do like to use kind of streets, you know, to, to guide the, the lines a little bit. But we're going to go outside uh, again. This is the area we're going to crop the image down to in a minute. Um, so again, no particular rhyme or reason with this other than to just help kind of position our cropping. All right. So there it is, and we've got inside is gonna be the area that we're gonna focus on. So with that, um, what I'd like to do first before we take the image out is sort of get our bearings uh, in terms of scaling. And so um, I tried to do this earlier, but the for some reason in my version of Google Earth Pro, the ruler doesn't seem to be cooperating. So I know that this building is 281 feet across so if you can see my ruler is just not wanting to work but i know and if you use google earth before you know that you can just draw a line across here and it'll tell you how many feet or however you know you want to you want to record that but i know that's 281 feet so that's what we're going to use for our scaling purposes so even if uh um you don't have that working you can you can always use the uh the legend down here below uh it's kind of buried by the properties dialog there it is right there you can take that right this piece down here at the bottom and then use that legend to kind of get your uh, scaling if you need it so there's that so we're going to save it file oh let's save our polygon first so we've got that let's do this take the image file save image and then there we go. The screen sort of crops itself a little bit, but yeah, as you can see, we still got our polygon, you know, clearly in place here that we're going to crop that down even further. But that's the image we want. One of the things you'll notice right off the bat, we get a, a resolution uh, choice here. And so we're going to take ultra high def and pay no attention to the dogs. I'm at a friend's house right now anyway. Um, so again, we can do a title and description box if you want to put some more details in there. We can do a legend uh, if you need it. If you just want to reduce the clutter, I recommend just you know disabling those. Uh, and that's it. We're ready to save. Take the ultra high def, the 4K version. 
uh, so we can get some clarity over an echo and save your image. All right, uh, I've already kind of pre-named it the, uh, the overlay project. Uh, we're going to dump it in our overlay demo folder here that I've conveniently pre-placed on the desktop. We're going to save it. Takes a minute to download because it's a large image, obviously. And there she goes. All right, um, that's it. Okay, remember 281 feet. We're going to jump in echo. We're going to scale it up and do a predictive model. All right, look at that. Um, preloaded. So I want to make sure that we've got the right map in there. So I'm going to remove that one. Add the new one. Boom. Okay. There's our, our building right there, 281 feet. First thing we want to do, uh, if you're familiar with Ekahau, is we want to scale this thing. So let's make sure we've got our scaling in there, 281 feet. Boom. All right, we're ready to go. Okay, so um, with that, um, now again, you're probably asking, well, why didn't we crop our image down first? Well, there's a reason. Um, I'm gonna crop it after because when we export our image out of Echohow, when we're finished modeling, it's gonna include this nifty um, you know, RSSI signal bar down here. And we don't really want that in there. So we're gonna have to crop that out anyway uh, when we do the image overlay. So we'll do all of our cropping after we export this image file here. So with that said, we've got our uh, scale, we've got our image here, and we know what our coverage area is. It's this inner portion here. Um, so make sure you've got your uh, coverage requirements there. I'm gonna go ahead and do, let's see, make sure I got everything set properly here. I'm going to do, um, let's see, I'm gonna do just basic data. I think that'll tell a better story. And didn't save. Oops. Basic data. Okay. And we're going to make the default. Sorry. Boom. Okay. There we go. Then let's start um, adding. Well, let's see. First off, we want to throw some attenuation as there areas in there because this is important. Um, building our attenuation areas will give us more detail um, in how the signal is going to work. Again, uh, you know, I say this loosely, this is not really a, a technical depiction of how the signal is actually going to fall or land or or be impacted, you know, in this area. It's just a, a visual wow type of, you know, presentation. So we're, we're wanting to add as much detail as possible without, you know, confusing customers. But we don't want to get overly complicated about it either. But I will say the more attenuation area you put in there, the better uh, the image overlay looks. So we'll do a rectangular image area, uh, or attenuation area. We're going to do um, a wide building. Let's do a 10 dBm, and then we'll just start building some attenuation areas in there. And I won't get crazy and do them all, but just enough to kind of show you what we're doing. And you guys should be really familiar with this stuff already. And that should give us what we want. All right, looks good. Okay, so with that, we'll jump into some APs. I'm just gonna use the generic APs with the generic antennas, nothing fancy. And then uh, let's go ahead and sort of light this area up. We'll do a basic uh, every corner AP kind of design. And again, uh, the purposes of this is really to explain your intent uh, around design. This is where you know your uh, expertise and professionalism comes in. So. Make sure that you do this uh, in a manner that you're going to be able to explain with perfect clarity and uh, be able to impress your customer with the sort of this visual aid, if you will, of what, uh, what the RF is going to be doing in the area. So um, that's pretty extreme. <laughs> I'd like to live here. 
Uh, so there, we got some good coverage there. So looks great, looks real busy, right? So let's turn off all of these uh, markers, starting with the antennas, uh, then we'll do the channels, and then we'll do the, I think the attenuation areas there. Do we just wanna show APs and signal uh, in this visual aid right here? All right, um, if you want, you can go ahead and do a, have a channel plan, make sure that the signal is as clean as it will get. All right, didn't do too much there. So anyway, there we go. There's just a, a quick down and dirty predictive model of what this uh, portion of the city would look like with a lot of APs out there, right? And then you can see we've got, you know, the, the buildings attenuated. So we got a sort of, again, a visual aid. Uh, again, it's not really a technical document, but a visual aid of what the signal will do, you know, given the certain uh, environmentals down here with the buildings. So that's basically it. So we want to go ahead and um, export this, do a report or under reporting, export image. Um, it's gonna pre-name it for you. It, if I already pre-selected our folder that I was working in. So we'll go ahead and take that, we'll export the image. And we're done with Akahau. That's about it. So we'll let that export, all right? Go back into Earth. Well, before we got to crop that down, we're going to fit it into our um, under our coverage area here. So we go into our folder. We'll open that um, signal overlay. Use your uh, default image editor, something that'll give you a cropping uh, abilities. We'll edit it, crop it, and again, there's that. See the RSSI legend down there. So we want to get that out for sure, and then. What we want to try to do is we want to try to get to our our um, our polygon that we put in there. We can bear I can barely see the lines in there. So in, in Earth, Google Earth, I can show you how to darken up those lines. But for now, we'll just kind of go with this. See, I mean, it's just going to draw it right to the lines anyway. So uh, in this one, I can barely see the line in there. Boom. There's that one. And right about there. And right about here. So boom, that's about it. That should fit nice and neatly back into our, our Google Earth uh, polygon that we created. All right. So we'll take that. We'll hit done. Now we're finished. Save it. All right, back into Earth. All right, so at this point we can kind of we can leave the uh, polygon on or we can toggle it off, um, whatever you know helps you the best. I kind of leave it on. I go ahead and like zoom out. Well, close X out. Make sure you X out of the image here, uh, the save image, because you won't be able to zoom in or out. And then zoom out because it's going to make a big image drop in here. Go up to the top, hit our overlay button, do our image overlay, and this is our. Our coverage model you can name it whatever you want and then you can see it gives you the opaque options here I take it full you know you can adjust it down if you like or you can play with it but don't close this dialog box just yet leave it open and you'll notice here it put a big crosshair you're gonna use your crosshairs to kind of edit where you want the image to go we'll center it up there and then um, we're gonna go back into our dialog box and we're gonna Browse for our image, there it is. Take that one, drop it in. Boom, leave your dialog box open here, your properties box. You definitely need to have that open to do any editing. Again, huge image, right? So we're gonna zoom way out. And then we can see here, we've got our, um, our controls to be able to manipulate this image. Again, what we wanna do is we wanna center it up around our, our polygon. You see how we use that to kind of help, you know, frame our reference area there. And then what I like to do is just get get one of the corners lined up in there like that. Take the opposite corner, grab it, and just pull it right down. Fit it right into that box, boom. It's kind of the quickest way that I've found to do it. And then we're 90% of the way there, right? So then what we can do at this point is that we can grab our image, we can bring it out, we can adjust it to our polygon. 
So, and then if you look through the image, this is where it gets a little weird. You can start using the buildings and the streets and sort of the, the stuff around it to kind of finely align your overlay image too. And so the more you do this, the better and faster you get, but it doesn't take long for you to kind of master this part of it. And that's about it. We're about smack on right there. All right, looks good to me. Maybe a little off over here. And this is where, you know, you can use multiple reference points. You can use the streets, you can use the buildings. I like to use kind of everything, right? Um, just to make sure that everything lines up because it won't be uh, perfect for any one thing. All right, close enough. Um, I typically start at my corner, work my way around in a circular manner just to check everything. Uh, give it a once over, make sure all the buildings line up, the streets line up. There, so it looks pretty good. So we'll bring uh, the menu back here and then we can toggle off our, uh, our coverage area if we want. Well, not until we close our dialog box here, but um, we're good there. So we've got our adjustments made for our overlay image. So now we can take the properties box for this overlay image. We can say, okay, and then it closes it. We can toggle off our coverage area and boom. We're basically there. Um, again, you can set your coverage area as wide as you want, as narrow as you want. Um, again, this is for your meeting, your purposes. You know, what I'm demonstrating here is that although we've got APs, you know, within our coverage area, we've got signal kind of bleeding out and it kind of shows you, you know, a little bit further out how that signal's looking, how it may impact other businesses or homes or buildings or whatever. So that's basically it. So with that, um, we can get real fancy and we can... Uh, make sure our 3D uh, buildings box is checked down here because that's what's going to give us our, our cool factor. And then we're going to rotate down and then bring it over here to the city. There we go. Zoom in on it and then look at that. Now we got some interesting perspective of what that signal kind of looks like. Again, maybe not the most technically accurate, although you probably could take a, an actual survey and dump it in there and do the same thing. Uh, but again, you know, so you got to do some work on your buildings and attenuation. But um, again, this makes for a, you know, a pretty cool meeting visual aid to help a lot of the, the non-technical people really and the non-wireless people in the room understand what the signal is going to be doing and what it, or what it won't be doing, um, you know? So again, you can use it for whatever you need it for. I found it makes, you know, great, uh, you know, meeting material. You can take your images out, you can copy them, give it to a salesperson, uh, put it in their collateral and their information, share it with customers, or uh, walk into meetings and, and own those meetings like a pro. All right, so that's how I use it. Um, if you've got uh, some better ways that you wanna show or, or share, please do. Uh, reach out to me on the blog site or on Twitter and let me know. And I appreciate you watching. And thanks very much. Bye-bye.